If you're working in the same file as the previous tutorial, you may continue to follow along with the adaptive components already arrayed on the roof. We're going to regenerate these adaptive components for this tutorial for people who are just jumping in now. If we open the Excel read base file, this is the same file we've set up in the previous lesson. You can see at the beginning, we've imported our file path for the Excel spreadsheet, which is giving us our four points to generate our adaptive components on the roof. As you can see, when we hit run, we should have our adaptive components arrayed, as well as our polygons generated in Dynamo. Let's hit zoom extents, and I'll hit run now. You can see we have our adaptive components on the roof, and they're rather thick right now. They're at two meters thickness. So this, of course, isn't realistic, but we're going to use this thickness as an abstraction to generate overridden colors in our view and also consider changing the instance parameters of this extrusion depth. So in this lesson, we're going to use these adaptive components as a set of pixels to reference an image. And the advantage of having our polygons imported into Dynamo as well as our adaptive components in Revit is that they're ordered in the same way in one list. So we can use these in future lessons to create analysis of this geometry and have that reflected on the adaptive components. So I'm going to hit Control G to go into geometry space in Dynamo. I'm going to right click and hit zoom to fit. You can see we have our surfaces in Dynamo as well. Let's put that in the top right again and hit Control G. So the first step here is to consider how we can read an image and have it drive Dynamo and Revit geometry. I'm going to open up our library and in the search bar I'll type in image. You can see the first option here is read image. I will drop that onto the canvas and let's zoom out. I'm going to drag this over to the right. And let's close our outputs here so we can have a little more space. And now I'm going to pull up the file folder. You can see here we have an image read folder in our module. And let's start with the gradient option here. I'm going to create a shortcut and then right click again and go to properties. It's just a quick way for me to copy the file path. And now we'll drop that into a string node in Dynamo. So I'll clear the search bar, type in string, and drop that onto the canvas. Put in the cursor and hit Control V. We have our file path. And we'll plug this into file path. Num X and num Y is asking for the number of samples in the X and Y direction of the image. And remember, this is a 15 by 15 panelization on the roof. We have 15 length and 15 along the width. So we're going to pull up a slider here, drop that onto the canvas, and I'll plug in 15. And I'll plug the slider into both numx and numy. Now if I hit run, you can see that although the node has turned yellow, which is just a little bug in Dynamo, we are in fact referencing all of the colors. You can see this is giving us our red, our green, our blue, and our alpha. If I scroll all the way down, you can see that we have 225 total pixels reference, and that's in line with the number of adaptive components. So making sense of these colors, we haven't yet visualized it, so it's not clear to us how this read image is working for us, and the quickest way to do this is to override color in our view. So I'm going to clear our search bar, and I'm going to look for override. And this first option, override color in view. And it's a simple node. It's asking for our element and the color to override. We have two lists of 225 items. The first is our adaptive component, which is our Revit element. And the second is our color, which is sampled from the image. So plugging those two in, I'll now hit run. You can see we've mapped a gradient similar to our image. Let's pull over the image here. And the advantage with this image is that its aspect ratio is created to be the same dimensions as the roof. So you could change this image in Photoshop and see the update in Revit. 
And the advantage to overriding this color in a view is you could call out a particular panel that you may want to focus on. Uh, if I zoomed in here, this can be done manually in Revit. If I select an element, right click, go to override graphics and view and hit by element. You can see our surface patterns has a certain color and a solid fill pattern attached to it. And that is what the override color and view node is doing. It's a basic script which is editing these properties.